All right, guys, today we're going to talk about eight knives that I use for basically everything. Now, what I mean by that is specifically, these are knives that I tend to gravitate towards for general use. So some knives are better at being, you know, like super slicey knives. Some are better for, you know, just processing food, processing cardboard boxes, and some are really designed more for outdoors. But these are knives that I genuinely feel pretty confident using for most tasks. And honestly, quite a few of these knives, or basically all of them, see a lot of pocket time. I'd say about the only one that hasn't seen a lot is this guy, and that's because I literally got it yesterday, but I have been EDCing it since I got it. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it with the first knife that I'm holding, and this right here is none other than the Protec Strider Auto SNG. Now, I really am a fan in the SNG proper, like the Strider SNG is on this list as well, but I have to say that the SNG, while I know it's not everyone's personal favorite, is probably one one of my favorite knives out there. Like it just, it's ergonomics fit me very well. And I feel like it's one of those knives that you can use for just about any type of task within reason. Obviously there are better knives for specific tasks, but the Strider SNG in its ergonomics and design just tend to work. And so that's why I really like the SNG. And of course the Protec Strider Auto SNG just takes those same basic fundamentals and gives you a button lock auto. So this one just makes it that much easier to deploy, that much easier to use. You know, you don't really have to think about it. You can just hit the button and the blade will come right out. So this one for me is a no-brainer because I do honestly carry this guy outdoors, outside quite a bit, and use it in a wide variety of tasks. So that is the Protec Strider Auto SNG. That is number one. All right, as I mentioned, the next one up is going to be the actual Strider SNG. This is basically the same core knife. It is, of course, just a little bit different with blade steel. It's titanium instead of aluminum and, you know, just a few minor differences. But overall, the uh, Strider SNG is a Strider SNG, and I really like it because, like I mentioned, with the Auto SNG, it just tends to fit me very well. And this is a knife that I know that I can do a wide variety of tasks with. Now, I will say I do think as far as blade performance goes, I like a true SNG just a little bit more because the auto SNGs have a flat grind, whereas this is still technically a flat grind, but you'll notice that the grind um, is a lot higher up. So hopefully you guys can kind of see here, it's trying to fit both of them in on the video, but you'll notice, and of course the camo on this does not help, but you'll notice that the grind line is much higher. It's like right about here, as opposed to on here, it's right about there. So definitely a little bit lower, and so this one's a little bit less slicey, whereas this guy is a little bit more slicey. So anyways, that is the Strider SNG, still great ergonomics, love both blades pretty much equally. All right, next one up is going to be the Ontario Knife Company Rat 1. Now, the Rat 1 is kind of one of those knives that I wonder why I waited so long to finally get one. But when I saw that they were dropping the S35 or CPM S35 VN version, I was like, okay, now is my time to really like get a um, Rat 1 because I've always, like, I haven't hated the ergonomics on them. They were just always a, a good knife to me, right? Like, it's just a good knife. And so, there's plenty of good knives out there. There was nothing that really pushed me like over that cusp of, okay, now I need one until they made this uh, Red G10 version with the CPM S35 VN. And at that point, I was like, you know what? For under a hundred dollars, this knife, you know, has a good track record, good ergonomics. Now it has a really good blade uh, steel on it. And I honestly really like the G10. Uh, the Red G10 is like a nice hit of color, especially in a sea of black, as you guys will see. Most of the knife handles in here are, you know, just black G10 or natural um, titanium, you know, which aren't necessarily bad, but you know, having a nice splash of color is kind of nice every once in a while. So that one for me um, is a little bit more on the slicey side, but the performance is definitely there and it's not like such a weak tip. Like it's n nice to see, hopefully you guys, hopefully this comes up well on the uh, video, but the tip is full flat grind, but it's not like honestly as acute as some other full flat ground blades. So I feel pretty confident in it. Like obviously you don't want to use any blade within reason as a screwdriver, but you could probably get away with it on the wrap one. 
All right, also another, what I would consider semi-budget knife. I would consider the Rat one, you know, like a semi-budget knife. The next one is another one I would also consider a semi-budget knife is the Demco Knives uh, 8020.5. So this is the smaller version of the 8020. Um, and this one is definitely one that I would consider to be a very well-rounded kind of do-all knife. And uh, this one definitely uh, just, it has a good blade shape to it. And ironically, I actually have two 8020.5s. Um, maybe one day I'll actually talk about how I got two of them, but I have one in the sheep's foot and one in just the clip point. But I would say I probably use the clip point or drop point, whatever you want to call it, just a little bit more. I'm like a little bit more preferential to this one, but both are great knives. The action is fire, but most of all, it has a pretty good blade stock to it. And a lot of people complain about how thick it is behind the edge. And no doubt it is worth noting that these are kind of thick behind the edge. You guys can see definitely towards the tip there, it is a little bit um, thicker, but that's also something that I don't hate. Once again, kind of going back to, you know, the similarities between like the SNG and this, it has a little bit thicker, more reinforced tip for a little bit harder use. All right, next one up and stepping into a little bit more expensive territory is going to be the TRM Shadow. Now this one's definitely on the thinner side, both of my TRMs are, but once again, I think the execution is very well done and I really am not that scared about, you know, like damaging the knife at all. Um, I mean, once again, obviously if you try to like pry a rock open with this thing or coconut maybe, you know, you're probably gonna break something on it, but within reason, this is pretty solid, pretty sturdy. And it's nice that I really love seeing knives, um, especially like these kind of higher end, like, you know, around 200-ish dollar knives, uh, taking on the axis lock, because I feel like it's very common to just revert to liner locks, frame locks, and those kinds of things. But it is nice to see other companies picking up the mantle and doing their own versions of the axis lock. So very cool knife. And I think overall the blade shape and ergonomics lend it, lend its hands to a wide variety of tasks. This one for me personally feels like a very um, food prep kind of knife because it has that large sweeping belly that basically just continues to sweep. And so I really do enjoy that part about that knife. All right, next one up is going to be the a very similar knife, I should say, the Spyderco Manix 2. Now, this is my S110V version of it. And once again, this one's probably the most delicate of all with that very acute tip on it. So it is very thin. Probably wouldn't want to do any prying with it. You could probably in a pinch though, because S110V is fairly fairly strong. I mean, it's not obviously going to withstand a ton of lateral pressure, but yeah. Anyways, so this is, like I said, the Manix 2, and it's very hard to go wrong with the Manix. Some people honestly complain about the ergos of the Manix. I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, the Manix probably has the some of the best ergonomics of a knife in the Spyderco collection, and once again, that's something that you're either going to agree or disagree with me on. Some people think the Paramilitary 2 is the best. Some people think the Manix 2 is the best. Some people like the Para 3, the Paramilitary, or sorry, just the whole military as a whole, just like the military. Um, and so anyways, you know, obviously things are different. Some people like the Delica, the Endella, you know, all those kinds of things. But for me, I think the Manix 2 is honestly the most comfortable. I like how well-rounded the back of it is. It just feels good in my hand. And of course, one of my favorite things about the Manix 2 is there is a lot of option here. You can kind of choke back, you can choke forward, you can just hold it in normal grip. Uh, lots of ergonomic options. Also too, it is a ball bearing lock. So it is pretty cool, pretty special. And I think the ball bearing uh, suits it well. It works just fine. All right, next one up and the smallest on the list is going to be the TRM Neutron. This is one that for me really hit the spot. Like I do, I don't fully like every day use these types of knives, but when I like to go trail running, when I like to be active and up and about, um, I like to have a smaller, more compact, more lightweight knife that I can just throw in a pocket and forget that it's even there. And for a while, the Benchmade Bug Out was that for me. And then for a little while, the Deca was that for me. And then I got the TRM Neutron 2. And this has honestly been really hard to set down because it is super versatile 
supremely slicey and for me like with my hand and everything it just fits very well like this is a knife that feels comfortable to me and is still super small you can throw it in the pocket and it will absolutely disappear now this is probably too small for some people, some people might like its bigger brother, the Atom. And I think these two are like ultimately the same exact design. It's just the Atom is about a half inch bigger in all dimensions. So like a half inch longer blade, half inch longer handle. Um, so it's just that little bit bigger. And so for someone with bigger hands, um, they would probably prefer the Atom. But the Neutron for me, uh, it just, it really hits that spot where honestly, like I've tried other smaller, you know, like compact blades, so to speak, and the Neutron just does it for me. All right, rounding it out, finally getting to the eighth blade. I know there's so many to talk about, is the CRK Umnum Zon. The Umnum Zon was one that I've wanted for a long time, and I knew I was going to get an Umnum Zon uh, for for a long time, like I knew I was gonna get one at some point, and I honestly wasn't sure how well I would like the Umnum Zon, but it is honestly growing on me, and honestly, like I have the Nkosi, I have the Sabenza, and the Zan, of course, but I, I really gravitate towards this one. For me, it just feels really good in hand, and also, too, has um, what I would say like a really good weight distribution to it, like it feels weighted properly, has a good edge length or blade length, and uh, yeah, it's just super versatile, and it also, very similar to the um, Strider Knives SNG, it feels like it can take on a lot, like it feels like a reasonably robust knife. Obviously, neither of these knives are the type of knife that you want to like pound through a tree or try to split a rock open with, but uh, you know, this thing does feel reasonably stout and reasonably robust. So anyways, guys, that rounds out eight knives that I carry when I'm doing just about anything. Now, of course, with things like outdoors, wilderness, survival, I will oftentimes have one of these uh, pocket knives on me and then a larger, more stout fixed blade, but that's the whole thing. Like that's a dedicated use case for that fixed blade, whereas these are just knives that are passively there and used for alternative tasks. So if I need to, you know, use a knife quickly, you know, say cut some paracord or, you know, do just some trivial task, these are the types of knives that I'll reach for instead of trying to, you know, finagle out a fixed blade from its sheath. So these are the types of knives and uh, yeah, I carry them for doing just about anything. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.